Hello. Can everybody hear me? I just wanted to get on a second early to just make sure audio and everything was okay. All right, so thank you so much for coming. Hopefully this is working out. Definitely let me know in the comments if you can't hear anything or see anything. I have a long list from people of different uh, you know, questions that they have. So we'll be going through those as well. And I think, you know, until everybody kind of gets here and can start asking questions in the chat, we'll start with some of those. Hi, Maureen. Thank you for coming. Hi, Yulia. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to start off with a question about cleaning brushes. So do you, should you wash them before first use? And, you know, you don't need to wash your brushes before first use. I always wash mine first uh, because I'm a little picky about that. And you just never really know, you know, where they come from and, you know, what might have come in contact with them. And so I do like to wash mine first. Most people do not. And some brushes, you know, they actually say, you know, don't bother washing them first. However, there is an exception. Sometimes you'll get a brush with kind of like this coating on it to kind of keep the bristles in place. It's like a wax. And in that case, you do want to wash that off before you use that. It's nothing, you know, nothing harmful to the bristles, but it helps keep them kind of in place when they are in shipping and so forth. So I'm trying to think of a brush that might come like that. You're looking typically at something that's going to be like a little bit wispy, more delicate and so forth. And sometimes you'll, you'll feel, you know, it'll feel hard. And that you do want to wash off first. So the way that I, oh my gosh, there's a mosquito in here. Um, the way that I like to clean my brushes, I brought those over. Um, you know, I have not heard, uh, I, sorry, I have not used the Parisian spirit, but I have heard that it is good to use that particular one. I kind of stick to my typical ones. So this is what I do when I'm cleaning my brushes. So I use one of these. This is from Sigma and I put this in my sink and, you know, it's got the suction cup so it stays put. And then I have this foaming soap dispenser. I just bought this at Target in the kids department and I shake it up first. I keep a mix of about one third to one fourth, closer to one fourth of um, the Dr. Bronner's liquid Castile soap and fill it up with water. And so I'll shake that up and then I'll squeeze that all over the mat. Then I also use the, um, I use the beauty blender charcoal soap. And, you know, after I bought the small one, I was disappointed. And someone told me that they were, they had them still on the their website, I stocked up. So I probably have like five years worth of those. So I'll be using that for a while, but I have tried some other, um, you know, products as well. And I think in general, if you are using any sort of soap that kind of rinses clean for the most part, you're going to be fine. So what I'll do is I'll get my brush is wet. So I'll dip the actual bristles in the water, try not to get, you know, water on the ferrule and so forth. And then if it's a really delicate brush, I will probably just do it in my hand, maybe get a little of the liquid soap and just swirl it like this. Then you want to thoroughly rinse, squeeze it out gently. And then I like to hang them to dry on the Sigma tower. So this is the eye tower. And there's also a face tower. It's actually a face and eye. So you can actually use these uh, little holders here to kind of help shape your brush as it's drying. And you just kind of go like that. Or, you know, unless I'm compressing it, I'll just go like this. And you just want to make sure your bristles aren't hitting those if you're not clipping it into that because you will get a kink in your bristles. So um, that's what I do with those. If it is going to be like a foundation brush, something more substantial, eye brushes, I'll get the bristles wet and then I will swirl into my soap here. And then I 
swirl into the liquid soap on here, then I thoroughly rinse. And uh, that works really well, you know, to prevent like staining and so forth of bristles, particularly things like certain synthetic brushes or undyed goat hair brushes. Some pigments are really, you know, really strong and they can stain your bristles. That is normal. Sometimes that will happen. Sometimes it's permanent. Sometimes you can get it out. This method typically gets out most of the stains. So, um, you know, I, that's, typically what I'll do. And if it doesn't look clean, I'll just go back in and do it again until it looks, you know, I'm happy with that. So let's see here. Um, all right. So that answers the cleaning question. Does anybody else have any questions about that? So again, you know, as for first use, you don't need to wash them first. I like to just because you know, I like to make sure it is thoroughly clean to my standards before I put it on my face to prevent like any sort of breakouts or anything. I had, uh, you know, very sensitive acneic skin for many years. So I'm, that's kind of like my mindset. So good morning, everybody. And let's move on to a, another question here. So the next question was the Refer 31 versus the Sonia G Sheer Buffer. And I've got those here. So I, I do want to say, by the way, um, Refer has some really exciting brushes coming out this fall. I've been testing them pretty much this whole year so far. So stay tuned for that. I know they are starting their buy one, get one free uh, tomorrow. I'm not sure exactly how long that's lasting. I haven't really received any details other than the, the email everybody else gets. That's all I've gotten as well. But you know, they've got some really exciting brushes coming this fall. I don't know the release date, but I would definitely make sure that if you're budgeting, you would save for some of those. We're looking at perhaps some different hair types and things like that as well. So on to the Sheer Buffer and the Refer 31. I find these to be very different brushes. So this Refer brush here, this is going to be mostly undyed goat hair. We do have have, I believe, a few synthetic fibers, and there's that mosquito again. So if you see it fly around, <laughs> I'm going to try and get it when I can. But, um, you know, we do have the duo fiber here. So two different layers. It's a stippling brush. You can see how dense this is. This is really great for foundation. So you can spread it. You can tap it. You know, it works really well for that. And because it is dense, it's really going to be great at moving around uh, product, uh, especially like a thicker product. The sheer buffer is going to be much softer um, in terms of your finish. You can see how much area it is. We've got longer hairs here. We don't have the slant or the angle that we have with the Refer 31. We do still have the duo fiber. Again, this is going to be your Herfusion series. So we're looking at untied goat hair and a mix of two different synthetics. So both of these brushes can be used for the same types of products, which is any medium. So we're looking at liquids, creams, powders, so forth. But this here is going to be better with your thinner consistency products if you're looking at, with liquids, whereas the refer is going to excel with the thinner and the creamier foundations. The, the Sonia G, you know, because it has a lot more flex, you know, it's going to work better with like serum foundations and things like that versus something thicker. Uh, this is also going to be really great for things like cream blush and highlight anything you want to go light with. I actually, uh, have a video going up later this week on this brush. So you will see that in more detail then, but it's also great for powder and so forth. So overall, I'd say the Refer 31 is a fantastic foundation brush. It's actually one of my all time favorites. And the sheer buffer is kind of more of an all over product. I would consider this necessarily a foundation brush, but more of a multifunctional, you know, brush. So different purposes, in my opinion, for that. All right. So uh, yes, I use the Beauty Blender Charcoal Brush Cleaner. And then in the liquid container, I have about a one-fourth to three-fourths mix of the uh, Dr. Bronner's Castile soap and water. And I just shake that up. So I'll, I use those. And I have to say, I do have actually a video with this already, but I have a very full video. Somebody asked for a video with the sheer buffer and all different ways to use it. So that is coming up 
um, I believe I have that scheduled for Saturday. So let's see here. Love all the bright blushes that are trending now, but each time I apply one, I end up looking like a clown. Can you recommend a cheek brush to use with these products? Maybe check a Hodo Z8. So I find that with bright blushes, you know, you do want to go in softly, but you also kind of, I think like the area brushes kind of, you know, they don't only just put that soft application, but it also kind of helps feather it out a little bit. So, you know, honestly, something like this sheer buffer is really good for that. Uh, the Sonia G, let's see here, the fundamental, hmm, um, here. This brush from her here, which is one of the, it's a Fan M from her Fundamentals. This is actually really nice for some of those as well, but I find it a little bit large, so it's probably not a, my favorite recommendation for that. For the brighter blushes, though, I also think any sort of buffing brush is great. So one of the things you can do is you want to get just the tiniest bit of your bright powder on the brush, stamp it off on your hand or a microfiber cloth, and then apply it. And then you can wipe this off on a cloth and then buff it in. And you're going to get a really sheer wash of it. So, you know, oh, I see the smell of the new goat hair brush. You know, they all kind of vary and it just depends on the stock. So, you know, I, yeah, unfortunately that's just, how, how they are sometimes. I can't say that mine particularly smell this batch, but I did have one recently that did. So um, yeah, that, that's something. And then uh, another one for bright blushes, you know, have you considered using something a little bit airier like this as well? So this is the detail brush from Sony G. This one's from the Lotus series. So, but there are other ones. This is another one that I like for that. This is Hakahoto. Oh, I don't, I wish they would label all of these. This one's not labeled. I believe it's in the G series, but this is very similar to it. And this one here is a mix of, um, I believe this one was squirrel and goat mix here that I have here. So you can put this on very softly. The Z8, uh, you know, I think if you're, it can be a little bit large for that area because it is going to be, hold on, I don't have that one sitting right here, but let's just hold this Surat brush for a second. Because the Z8, you know, your fibers are going to be kind of, you know, they're soft, they're squirrel hair. They kind of stay together a bit more. They compress together a bit when you put them on here. So because it is a little bit of a larger brush, when you're applying that product, you know, you don't necessarily have as much control over how it feathers on the sides. So unless that brush is the perfect size for your application, um, I would recommend going with a smaller brush. So does that answer your, your question, Christine? Let me know. And then it's here. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, the S Sonia G L brush for blush. Yeah, that one's nice. And I have that one sitting somewhere here. And um, the L, yeah. So Claire, you know, I, I would definitely agree with the L brush, which I have sitting right here. The, well, this is the worker L. So I'm guessing you're talking about the worker L and not the fan. L, but yeah, uh, I think this is a really great option as well. So let's see here. I find if I do accidentally go a bit heavy on my blush, use a large buffing brush with some setting powder or spread and lighten it. I do that also. And um, I think that's fantastic. I also will just go in with um, more of one of these types of powder brushes. You can see we have the pinched ferrule. So it ends up being more of a paddle shape. Um, put powder on this and kind of go over that and it will soften the edges as well. This one here is a Koyoto Yoshiki monochrome brush. It's just the one that I've been using a lot right now. So favorite brush for cream blush versus liquid brush, blush versus powder. Okay. So this really depends a lot on the formula. Like even with powder, you know, you've got your different types. 
something like the Sisley Fido blushes, you know, they have kind of that creamy powder. They're pretty intense. I like the Sonia G buffer brush. I feel like that blush in particular looks best buffed into the skin. So the smooth buffer is my preference for that one. For regular powder blushes, um, you know, if I want to pick up quite a bit of product, you know, I have two favorites. That would be the Refer 37 as well as the Sonia G Classic Cheek, which is right here. So these are going to be like two of my go-tos. You can see they're a little different here. This one is going to be a little bit airier and fluffier, whereas this Sonia G is a bit more domed. So it kind of depends on, you know, application in that case. But those are kind of go-tos for powder blushes. And for cream blushes, I can also go ahead and use these. Um, but uh, right now I've really been loving the sheer buffer for your liquid blushes and the cream blushes. Honestly, I typically will just go in with my foundation brush unless it's a very large foundation brush that I was using. If it was, um, I also like the Chikahoto T3, which is very similar to the Refer 17. So I use these two a lot, as well as the Sonia G um, Classic Base here and the Mini Base. So it depends on the size of the container to which of these I prefer and the shade of the blush. If it's a deeper shade, I like the smaller one so I have more control. If it's a light one that I really wanna build up, I go in with the classic base. So those are kind of my go-tos for the different mediums. And yes, for blush, favorite Chikahoto Z4. Yeah, the Zen series is fantastic. And if you don't have any of those, but you've been interested in them, it has officially been discontinued. So pick up what you can now. The Surat blush brush, that is a really nice blush brush as well. All right. And then I had um, a question about my favorite refer brushes. I have to say things like this, they change all the time, but I did pull out um, kind of the ones that I use the most. Refer 37, this one is going to be a favorite. Also, I really like the four and this works great for, um, you know, I like it a lot with those like bronzier blush shades. And so if you want to do like brontour or something like that, this works great as well. And if I want to get a lot of color from a lighter powder blush, because of this angle here, it really helps you know, kind of gave you a stronger application, which works nice there. And the undyed goat hair, it's a little bit stiffer um, because of the way this is bundled and angled. So you can really pick up a lot of products. So that is another favorite. I, I mean, the Refer 20 fan brush, this is just my favorite fan brush. So uh, I like the wispiness of this. I like the density of it. You can see it's not super wispy where you're not really getting anything up, but it's not dense. It's not super thick. And this I like for highlight. So it's one of my go-to highlighting brushes. My other favorites from Refer, you know, I think they do crease brushes really well. So the Refer 27 is kind of a great all around crease brush. You can see we've got kind of that pyramidal top. And if you go in very lightly, you can use that to get like a deeper shade in there without spreading. But then you can also use this whole crease brush. If you touch the whole thing to the surface, you know, you can really get more of that buffed out blended. Uh, appearance there. So the Refer 27, I think is a great all around, but these are probably my two most used Refer brushes. We have the Refer 15 and 14, the 14 is a smaller one. 13 is just a little bit smaller. So the 13 and 14, I probably like interchangeably, but the 15 is my favorite larger crease brush. And I have to say, I do like the Refer crease brushes more than the Sonia G ones. These are the ones that I use most. I also like these more than the Chikahoto crease brushes because I feel like the Chikahoto crease brushes, you pretty much have the same shape for all of their different collections. Um, looking, the Z11 though is a really great one. I do like that one. 
and that's this one here. So I, I really do think this is a great crease brush, but if you're looking for multiple sizes, I really like the rougher ones. I also really like Hakahoto. I think Hakahoto crease brushes are really great too. And they have such a variety of different shapes, sizes, hair types, and so forth. So um, if you're looking for crease brushes, I would look at rougher and Hakahoto personally. And then um, let's see here. The other brush I wanted to mention from Refer is the 24, which was my go-to bron bronzing brush before. Um, they do, the 22 is the larger version. It's too large for me, but I do really like this for um, buffing in some blushes as well. You can see the size here. So this is another go-to. It's also, you know, dense enough that this is a great brush to like travel with because you can use it for foundation, blush, bronzer, and so forth. And then probably um, aside from the crease brushes, my most used brush is the foundation 31. This is one of my all time favorite foundation brushes. So I would definitely recommend this. And this brings me into, um, the next question, which was which refer brushes are better than others, regardless of price. I think this one is <laughs> the 31. Um, you know, I have so many great foundation brushes and I love them. But this is definitely one of my go-tos. I love the shape of it. I love the size of it. I love the fact that we have the duo fiber here. Um, you know, the density is fantastic. I think this is one of the best foundation brushes. So that is definitely there. And then there's just something about this fan brush that, you know, I think is special. I'm not sure why, but you know, it just has the perfect amount of density, featheriness and so forth. The closest brush to that is the Omnia Gold Fan Brush, but you can see that that is gonna be a bit larger. And, um, but they do have about the same density. The Omnia Gold is slightly airier. We've got a little bit more density with the refer. It's also a little smaller. So I do prefer the refer because of the control, but I would have to say that those brushes as well as the crease brushes are better than other brushes, um, regardless of price. However, I would say that the Hakahoto crease brushes, um, the, I would say that they're comparable. You've got kind of similar sizes and shapes to the refer ones, but you can also kind of customize those a little bit more. So, you know, that that's my thought on that. All right. So if I could only use one brush for powder eyeshadow, which would you reach for in your collection? So that's really tough because my all time favorite powder eyeshadow brush is the Sonia G soft shader. And I have five of them because it is my favorite and I use it all the time. So that's this one here. However, I don't like it for you know, if that were the only brush I was using, you can use it that way, but I don't think it's ideal for that. If I had to only use one brush, I think it would probably be, um, sorry, here, let me, instead of making all this noise, <laughs> these are my eye brushes. So this is a utensil container I picked up from Amazon. So I have two of these that I have right here on the side, along with some of the wrapper containers holding my powder brushes. So I think if I had to just go with one brush, hmm, that's a really tough question. It would have to be something a little fluffier like this. So this is the Hakahoto from the Winter Lights collection. You can see it still have a similar shape to soft shader, but it's a little bit fluffier. Uh, um, this one here is the Worker 3 from Synergy. Mm, I think that one's probably a little bit too dense. So this one would be good as well as something like the Refer 33 if you're doing an all, all over one and done kind of shade or you know, I actually just had it before earlier. Uh, the Refer Zero One is a good option for that as well, for the same reason, because it's a similar shape, but you can see how fluffy this is. This will work in the crease. I think that's really good for that. And um, yeah, I think those would probably be my top choices for that. Oh, this is the other one I was looking for. This is the Hakahoto J5523. Again, similar shape to these two. Um, this one, however, is a little bit smaller. And this, if I had to use only one, this would be it. Of course, you can't use this for lining, but it will work for crease and mobile lid color. And 
Let's see here. All right, so powder foundation. All right, so powder foundation, you can use pretty much any of these dense brushes like something like the Refer 24 or um, this is the Ray Morris, this is the 28. So, you know, any sort of those um, uh, kabuki brushes. This is the Wayne Goss Holiday Brush from a couple of years. This is one of the new um, Cuido Deca brushes. I, I mean, I love this Wayne Goss one for powder foundation, but unless you already have it, you're out of luck. <laughs> so I think this is the next best option for powder foundation. This would be my, my favorite here. You can see how dense it is. It's incredibly soft. It's domed. It has a great shape, cleans up well, and it is freestanding. So, uh, you know, I like that. So I think those are going to be my favorite brushes for powder foundation. But again, sometimes like if I'm traveling or something, I'll just go ahead and use whatever or even a sponge. But those are my go-tos for that. Another brush that doesn't get a lot of attention and this is the gear long. I don't even know if they're still making this, but they had it still like a few months ago. This is the gear long, um, licenciel brush. And this is actually like charcoal and charcoal. And I want to say a bamboo type fiber in here. So it's a very soft synthetic, but you can see how, you know, You've got density, but flexibility. This is great for liquids and powders. This is also a favorite brush of mine. So really like that one a lot. They actually don't recommend cleaning this one often, but I don't listen to them. <laughs> so um, yeah, I would say those are great for powder foundation. All right, favorite red squirrel brush and preferred way to use that red squirrel hairbrush. Okay, I have to say, I don't have very many red squirrel brushes. I have a couple, um, you know... Let me come back to that because it's going to take me a minute to kind of find those. So let me go through some other questions where I, you know, I can get to those quickly. Um, Kalinsky brushes. I only have a couple of Kalinsky brushes, so I wouldn't say that I really use them too much. They're new to me as well. So um, the ones that I have, I haven't gotten to use them enough. They're very nice. The ones that I have so far, which... Do I have any in this box? Um, you know, they, the ones I have are going to be more like eyeshadow brushes and uh, I like them for like shimmers and so forth. And so the ones I have, I do enjoy so far, but I've honestly only used them a handful of times. And the Suku powder brush. Okay. So here's the thing with Suku brushes, the new ones, I have not tried the new Suku powder brush. I have tried some of their newer synthetic brushes, um, you know, that came as like gift with purchases, but with some of the Suku collections, what was that like a year or two ago, they were doing some of those sets that included brushes. And, um, yeah, I don't love the new ones. I think the original Suku squirrel brushes were so much better. Now that particular, if you're talking about that powder brush and that blush brush, I really love those. So let me see, I should have those right here, but here is the, this one here is the Suku powder brush. And it's super soft, very nice to use. Unfortunately, they're not making these anymore. So if you really wanted one of these and you couldn't get them, there are some other options. So this one here, and I do have some videos comparing these. So this one here is a Kyrado. And, you know, supposedly Kyrado is the one who actually was the manufacturer for the Suku brushes. So it's almost, you can see the shape is almost the same. The Kyrado is slightly bigger ever so slightly different in shape. But again, that could just be a difference because they are all handmade. But you can see that they're essentially the same. You've got the same hairs. They feel almost the same. Uh, well, I mean, honestly, you're really not going to tell much of a difference. And then there is another option, which is the Fude Japan brush. So Fude Japan, they do have their own line of brushes and they only have a few, but they are pretty much all dupes of the suku brushes that have been discontinued and 
I think they're a great option. They're also less expensive than the Kyredo. So I think they're another really good option. This one here was kind of compressed in my box, but you can see, again, we've got the same shape. And again, these are also going to be made by Kyredo. So um, I think those are all great options if you can't get the Suku ones. But I do think the original Suku Squirrel line, the Kyredo line, and the Fuda Japan line, they're all fantastic. Great shapes, great sizes. I would have to say that the L brush for eyes is a fantastic go-to brush. Pull that one out right here. So that's this brush here. So this is a great all-in-one, you know, one and done um, brush. This is one I actually should have included in that uh, other question there. But you can see, you know, if you're doing just one shade, you've got crease, you've got mobile lid, everything kind of included with this, and it's incredibly soft. So again, Fude Japan and Kyreda both have a version of that brush as well. All right, so moving on. Um, powder bronzer application, precise application. Okay, so if you want precise application, you know, you've got a few options. My favorite bronzer brush is the jumbo bronzer, but this is not really going to be precise. This is if you just want like a tiny bit. If you want precision, you might want to consider one of the fan brushes. So fan brushes, let's see here. Depending on how precise you want, I do think that the Sonigi Worker Fan is a nice choice. If you like larger, the Fan, I think it's a, yep, the Fan L is a good choice for that as well. And if you are not looking for a fan brush and you want something a bit more, you know, you know a different shape, if you like a lighter area but still precise application, if you can still find this, this is the Koyoto Year of the Ox brush. And um, this is a go-to for me. This is one of my favorites. I absolutely love that brush. And then I think that another great option is the, where is it? Mm. Here it is. Chikahoto F04. So it's angled, so it's going to be able to get into any areas. This is good for contour or bronzer. I think it's small enough that you have control and precision. It's incredibly soft, so you can get a light wash of color, or you can really build this one up. So this is definitely a go-to, one of my favorite brushes of all time. This is Silver Fox. So um, yeah, I would definitely recommend this if you are interested in that shape and size. All right, so favorite set for powder eyeshadow. Bought the Sky Set. I love the Sky Set from Sonia G. And I think that is a great eye set to get. I also love the Pro Eye Set. My favorites from the Pro Eye Set would be the Worker Pro, which I use all the time. This and the Soft Shader are my two favorite shader brushes. I also really like the um, Blender Pro or Builder Pro from here. And the Blender Pro is nice as well, but these are my top two from that. So you might, might want to supplement with those two in the um, future. But if I were to pick an eye set in general, like actually as a set, that would be my favorite. I also think if you're looking for shader style brushes, a great option is the Tansedo Force set. So this is the largest one, and there are four sizes that go down. You can pick your color handle. Um, I liked the blue. They also come in red and black. And these are ones that I use quite a bit as well. Um, so there are two more smaller ones than this, which here's one of them. And... I'm not seeing the other one at the moment, but it's in here somewhere. So um, I think those are great eye sets to take a look at. But yeah, those would be my choices. If you're getting an eye set, I'd go with the Sonia G personally. And then a mineral powder. So if you're looking at mineral powder, like as a foundation, that goes back to the same types of powder foundation brushes I, be, I mentioned before. This would be my choice. It's the Koyoro Deca 
Fupa Deca brush. And um, yeah, this, this is my number one choice for that. So Amazon container link. Yes, I will. I'll find that and I'll put that in the description box after we're done here. And I agree, Jocelyn, that FO4 is incredible. Cream shadow in pots like Charlotte Tilbury or Tom Ford. I think I think the best type of brush for that is going to be a shader style brush. So brand, you know, doesn't really matter, but you want something that is going to be kind of compressed. So you've got a pinch ferrule, so it's going to be flattened and this will help pick up the product. You can put it on. You can use any of the undyed goat hair or synthetic brushes. If you're looking for a synthetic brush, the Chantecai Shade and Sweep. I like this for cream products. I think this works really well. Um, but recommendations for undyed goat, I think from refer, the best ones there would be the zero two. And then the one that I was just holding up, which, where did I put that? Um, what was that? The, that was the 28, I believe. And then from Sonia G, I honestly, I go in with my usuals, the worker pro or the soft shader. So those are great go-tos. And then, um, I also really like this LH Cosmetics, this is the 305. I use this for cream and liquid products when I need precision. So if you're looking for something, you know, as a deeper shade and you really want to make sure that it's not smudging, look how this really doesn't, you don't have any fibers that are flaring out on the sides. So you're not going to make as much of a mess. So I think this is really great. Plus it's stiff enough that you could use it for liner if you want more of a smudgy liner look. So I think that's great. West Monatelli also has a couple great ones for eyeshadow. And that would be these two here. So I think these are great. Refer kind of has versions of these. Um, so these are synthetic from West Monatelli. So this one here, I think is great for doing like a one and done look with a cream shadow. You have the angled shape here again, just like that LH cosmetics one that we were just looking at your fibers aren't going to flare out at all. So you're not going to make a mess. This is a bit larger though. So just something to note. And then this one here, we've got kind of this duo fiber action, and this is going to help you kind of buff out in the crease. Or if you want to use this all over, you can get kind of a lighter wash of color. So this one is the eyeshadow two and this is the eyeshadow one. So I think those are good options for um, cream shadows and liquids. All right, and then let's see here. Face at my concealer. Okay, so I would have to say that has recently because to set concealer like with powder, my favorite now is that worker L brush from Sonia G, which is this. So I love the density of this and being able to put that on. If I'm applying um, concealer, my favorites are going to be this BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy. It's the A506. I've been really loving this. And then the Sonia G um, soft concealer are my go-tos for those as well. So those are to put it on, but to actually set it right now, it is this worker L brush. And yeah, I would have before this, you know, I was using like the detail pro and so forth, but this is better than this is my favorite. And what's going to tell you? Yep. Those are good brushes. Cream bronzer. I like something like, um, you know, if, if you don't mind going larger, the refer 24, Otherwise, I like, this is a slightly smaller version. This is the T11 from Chikahoto. I think this is a great option because you can really, you get more control. If you're somebody who likes bronzer kind of all over, then I go back to the same brushes I recommend for cream blush products. Something like this, this is the T3 or, um, you know, again, the 24. I think those are great. If you have kind of a soft cream that spreads out easily, you can even go in with something angled uh, like this Ruffer 04 or, you know, I would go, you have to go with undyed go hair or synthetic. So those would be kind of my choices with those. Um, strategy, make sure I use all my brushes. I, 
I'm working on that. <laughs> so I keep all of my eye brushes right here, as well as my favorite most used brushes. They're all in containers right here on the side. And then I keep my foundation brushes in here and I try to rotate through them. Um, and then up oh, there's that mosquito. Oh, I missed it. Um, let me just get that real quickly. All right. I got that. <laughs> and um, so then I keep back in the next drawer. That's where I keep like my special powder brushes, which, you know, I have in a box here and I just rotate. I'll pull out a couple of these, you know, like a few of these to keep on the side, you know, of my vanity here for the month. And then after that month is over, they go in the box and I just rotate through. So I just kind of try to pull from there and rotate. And I'll do that with any brushes that I have, you know, quite a few of or, you know, duplicates of, so I can make sure I use them. Another, you know, category that I have a lot of brushes for it would be um, the blush brushes. Now my eyeshadow brushes, I use all of these regularly, so I don't have to rotate with those, but the blush and powder brushes, I have to do a rotation system. And um, yeah, so honestly, storage is, is troublesome. So I have, as I mentioned, my containers on the side, and then these are a little bit taller. So I use the rougher containers for the powder brushes, which often have some smaller handles here. So I'll use those. And then I also keep cups here with the brushes that I use that day or ones I'm testing out. And then I have smaller diptyque things with my travel size brushes, which, you know, have the shorter handles. So yeah, it organization is always, always a struggle. All right. So we have about 20 more minutes. I still have some more questions, but if you have more, please put them in the, um, in the text box. So next question was my favorite Hakahoto brushes. And they asked for three, but I have four because I think this has been discontinued, but it's incredibly soft, you know, pine squirrel brush. Look at this angle. This is fantastic for eyeshadow. Absolutely love this. So I had to include it in a favorite, but I don't think I couldn't find it online either. I purchased mine from Food Aid Japan, but I also couldn't find it on the Hakahoto US website. So I don't know if it's available anymore. Now I would have to say for Hakahoto though, my most used brushes from them are actually the eye brushes. Uh, they've got tons of great other brushes. There is a really nice, um, where is it? This is another one that I use a lot from them. I don't remember what it is, but it's a mix of goat and squirrel. Uh, again, I wish they'd label these. I want, it's in the G series though, I believe. But my most used are going to be these three eye brushes here. So we have the B142, which is a crease brush. And you can see it's pointed. It's similar to one of the Sonya G crease brushes. But I like this one just a little bit more. I feel like we've got a little bit more structure here. Um, it just, this is really great for getting in the crease, like truly in it. And to really kind of buff out around the crease, I like the J5533. And shader style, we have the B004G, which you probably see me use quite a bit in some of the demos. Um, those are going to be my most used Hakahoto brushes. So those would have to be my favorites. All right. Favorite brushes for contouring. I don't contour that much, but when I do contour my favorites, you know, I, it kind of depends whether I'm using a cream or a liquid because one of my favorite products to contour with is the Burberry Essentials Glow Palette, which is here somewhere. I just reorganized my drawers, but this palette, you know, the cream product in here, this is the, the darker one, but I use the lighter one usually. That one there, I like to just add a few dots and then I like to blend that out uh, for contouring with something like, where's that, the T11, this one because it gives me a bit more precision. And then if I want to make it a little wider afterwards, I can do that. Or I'll go in with the refer um, 17 because this is a little bit smaller 
than the T3. So I find that that's helpful when I'm working with the deeper colors. Now, um, for contouring, like if you're contouring around the nose and you want smaller things and you're working with powder, I think that, let's see here, where is it? Hmm. Looking, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head right now, but, um, you know, I like to go with like a smaller brush for that. So if I'm working with powder, something maybe like the, the Detail Pro from some new G, this is a little large to go around the nose, but I do think that the newer fan brush here, the fan A, and it's not new per se, because the older version worked well. This is really nice for contouring as well. The Fan M is great too, but this is a little bit, I like the, how, how much it stays compressed at the tip and the density you have. So if you do want to do like here on the nose, if you want to, I, this is my most used fan brush besides the refer because I use this for eye cleanup. <laughs> so I think this is a great one for contour as well. So those would be my questions or my choices there. Which Surat brush is my favorite? That's actually really easy because that is the smoky. I like the medium size the best. I think this is a really special brush. So I love their smoky eye brushes. I have all three of the sizes. There's Grande, Moyenne, and Petite. But the Moyenne is the one I use the most. And you can use this as a crease brush. But the actual ideal use for this is when you're working with something you want, kind of that soft blended watercolor effect on your lid, you use it like this. And this is great. Like you can kind of see like up close how many different lengths of fibers we have here. So you're really getting kind of look at that when, when I fan that out you can see how that's really going to help and kind of attach to everything and give you kind of that soft blended effect. So this is by far my favorite Surat brush, which brings me to a question on the list about the Surat brushes in general. I think they are great brushes. I love all of them, but the ones that I think are not as worth it as the others would be their shader style, which are their classic eye brushes, the classic. I just, I don't really use these too often. Um, I don't reach for them. They're very soft. They're very nice, but they are going to give you a very, very light application of eyeshadow. And I just tend to prefer others, even with the shape, same shape and size. So those I don't love as much. I don't like their foundation brush because it's a little bit too rough on the skin. And then the, um, yeah, those would be the ones that I really don't love. I also don't use their angled brush quite as much, but I do like that one. I would still recommend that. It's not as soft as some of the others. So that one, um, you know, it's kind of the shape of the FO4, but I choose the FO4 over it. So my favorite Surat brushes, the powder brush, the blush brush, the smoky eye brushes, those are definitely favorites. And the highlighting brush is great as well. All right, the Chikahoto Z4 with the Ihoto Maki blush brush. Okay, let me see. I should have those right here. Um, let's see here. We're looking at... Oh, it's so weird. My um, chat just kind of got messed up and the letters got all scrambled. Z4 should be right there. It might be in this box. One second. All right. So the Ihoto Maki um, blush brush. Let's see here. Finding this um, pine squirrel one right now, but oh, here is this one that you're you mean? So this one here, and then the four. 
So the Z4 is actually fairly similar to the Surratt blush brush. Um, got it. Here it is. So here's the Z4. And is this the, the Maki brush? So this is the one that, that I have at least. I don't have too many. I have, I have no brushes. Um, so in this case, you can see the shapes here are very different. We have a paddle style here. We have, um, you know, longer, thinner, so forth. So with this, this is going to give you a really nice soft blush application. You can get a bit more precision. You know what? This, I think, actually the Z5, now that I'm looking at it better. Um, so my Z4 should still be in here. Again, this is one, yeah, it says highlight brush on it. So sorry, this is the Z4. I mean, the Z5. Um, I am having a hard time finding that at this moment, but picture it more domed. <laughs> regardless, the Z4 is going to have a slightly, it's smaller overall. It's more domed. It's going to be, again, more like the Surratt cheek brush, which is this shape here. And you can see overall, it's going to be much smaller. I think that the Z4 is a great all around everyday blush brush. Whereas the Ihoto, if you're looking at one of these, um, Oh, Addy, this is Z5 cent eyeshadow. Then I, that's probably, this is um, a different number than I just have the, but this is the highlight brush and not the blush brush, which I, yeah, I think this is a, I don't know. I, I have to actually look at the picture to remember now. I wish they would put the numbers on here, but I'm pretty sure this is a different one and the Z4 looks more like this. So this might, yeah, the Z2, this could be the Z2. Um, but this is going to be better for like larger washes of color, lighter blushes and so forth versus the, the Z4, which is going to be better, like kind of all around in my opinion. Um, let's see here. I used to be able to store my brushes flat in drawers and then I ran out of space. Now, if you were to ideally store them in brush in drawers, gosh, there's another mosquito here. Um, then what you want to do is they sell these little things that it's like, um, it, it raises, you can raise your brush a little bit. It's like, they, they look like this and you put your brush handle in there. So your handles are kind of there and it's not, it's not going to be like super raised, right? It's just like a little bit. So that way they don't get flattened. So you can do that, but obviously it takes up a ton of space. So that's not something, um, that I can do. But that is an ideal way. If you don't have a large brush collection though, and you use them all regularly, I used to store mine in drawers like that as well. And uh, without anything, just, you know, kind of flat in a box and like I'm doing now. And there was no real issue as long as you're using them on a regular basis. So I think that's good. If you do have brushes though, that you use very, very rarely, you know, you definitely perhaps want to consider some of the special boxes or special drawers with some like pest repelling, you know, like cedar type things and so forth that kind of help keep those a little bit more preserved. So, um, that's an option. I don't have any of those. My Surratt brushes do not shed fibers. Um, if they're shedding more than they used to be, yeah, you might end up having some issue now. Uh, it might be time to retire those. If they have always been shedding, it could just be loose hairs that are mixed in there. It kind of depends how much have shed. So that's kind of a tough question. Um, let's see here. Show all three Surat eyeshadow brushes to see the sizes. Let me see. Here's the petite. Yeah, so here are those. So we have the Grande, the Moyenne, and the Petite. So the Petite, the reason I don't like this one as much is this works really nicely as a thin crease brush, and that's what I like to use this for. But 
because it's still very long, you don't have as much control as just a regular small crease brush, but it's so small that it doesn't work as well in this application for me. So the petite is the one I use the least. I think this is actually great under the eyes. This is another one that I've used to set concealer with in the past. Um, so this is great for that. I also like it for a highlighter brush, but it's a little large for my eyes. So for me, the medium size is the best one. So those are those. Um, the Surratt Angle Brush, yes, a Horse and Squirrel. Okay, I knew it was a mix of something, but I couldn't remember. That one is just, it's a little bit rougher, so I just don't use it as much. And Fusion Blender from the eye set for concealer. The Fusion Blender. Um, let me pull that one out. You could use that for concealer. I mean, honestly, you can use any of her um, fusion brushes for that. So I would say that would work. Let's see here. Worker. All right. Well, I can't find it at this moment, but yes, I would say you could use the fusion fusion blender for concealer. Um, does it have similar movement? I, off the top of my head, without seeing it here, it's a little bit stiffer, but let me see if I can find it. Um, here, here's a Fusion Blender versus a Soft Concealer. And see the size difference because it is a little bit um, smaller. It's going to just have a little bit, it's a little stiffer in movement because you don't have as much to kind of splay out. So you can see going through the eyes, um, this is just a little bit more, it has more presence on the skin. You can feel it a bit more versus the soft concealer. All right. Uh, let's see here. Red squirrel brushes, I, I'll get to those, I promise. I just really don't have many. So I don't have, I have to, I have to look. Um, let's see here. Refer store reopening soon. Yes, tomorrow it should be. And Ray Morris brushes when I travel. Honestly, I use them mostly when I travel. Yeah, so that was another question. Which brushes do I usually travel with? I don't travel a ton, but... Uh, I do typically take this travel set with me because I love having the magnetic frame. It's really easy to, you know, if I were to wash a brush while I was there, I hang upside down to dry, you know, I've got a variety of shapes and then, yeah, this is typically a go-to. And then I take like a handful of, you know, random other brushes like from, I'm, actually packing now. My mom's going to come and watch Sadie for us, but um, we are, we're leaving. So that's why I'm kind of trying to go through this fairly quickly, but I'll probably, I, I have to pack, but I'm going to be taking also the uh, Sonia G jumbo base as a concealer brush. And then I probably, probably won't even wear bronzer at all this time, but I'll also take the um, buffer brush in the travel set as well. And I usually, you know, well, yeah, that's probably about it, but I might also take the um, jumbo blender because I like this better than, um, you know, Ray Morris is kind of missing that particular uh, size and shape in the travel eye brushes. So that's probably what I'll, I'll pack with me this time. And the way I like to pack it, and I've shown this before, the travel set comes with this case so you can just fold it up in here so you just put this in here and just put that in this folds in like this and then it snaps shut so it's magnetic and then I'll just wrap it in a microfiber cloth so I have all of those things with me so that's going to be my go-to for that now red squirrel um Trying to see, I really only have a couple so far. I did just recently get some new ones that I haven't used yet. Let's see here. Let 
these are our new brushes, mostly. Some of these are, are not brand new per se, but By the way, I got some recommendations from, if you don't follow her yet, Ms. Siobhan on uh, Instagram. She has fantastic brushes. This still has a plastic on, but she gave me some recommendations for some of the Chinese made uh, food aid brushes. I mean, I guess they're technically not called food aid then since they're not from Japan, but uh, they're not at least kimono food aid. So anyway, super, super soft, really great brushes. I will have to be featuring these soon. But I definitely wanted to see those. I have to apologize. I think I'm just going to have to go through and sort out and find my um, red squirrel brushes. As for the Kazan, that's actually, I don't know if they're classified as red squirrel because they are specifically Kazan squirrel brushes. They are still my number one favorite brush series of all time. I absolutely love them. This is the KZ4. And this is my favorite blush brush of all time. I try not to show it too much because, you know, it was so hard to get. I have to say, though, the whole series is fantastic. And if you want to classify these as red squirrel brushes, um, these are definitely my favorite. But let me know. And a squirrel dupe for the Wayne Goss airbrush. Hmm. So I have the airbrush right here. And a squirrel dupe for that. Let's see here. I have to get kind of flat. So, hmm. I will have to, I'll have to see if I can find a dupe for this. I don't know of one off the top of my head that has quite the same shape and this, but if you guys just want to go through, I know I didn't get through everybody's questions. So if you want to just go ahead and leave all of your questions in the video, you know, I will write them down and we can do another one of these, um, you know, maybe when the kids get back to school or maybe even before that. And we can go ahead and um, answer the rest of the questions then. So I hope that was helpful. And thank you guys so much for, for coming and any last minute questions. So... All right, so this week I do have quite a few things coming up. We've got the Prada video that's going up tomorrow. I've got the new YSL blue eyeshadow and the Valentino liquid lipsticks. Mine finally arrived. I bought nine of them. I couldn't even remember how many, but they were fantastic. So uh, yeah, let me know what other things you'd like to address. I know some other questions that I did not get to were about which hair fibers to use with which products and so forth. Your general rule of thumb is any sort of squirrel brush is going to be powder only. Undyed goat hair is going to be liquids, creams, powders. Your synthetics also liquids, creams, powders. Uh, any sort of fox hair, you know, I personally recommend just powders. Some people do use them with liquids without issues. Uh, Main thing is anytime you do use a liquid or cream product with any sort of like a dyed goat hair or squirrel brush or anything like that, you do want to be sure to clean off your product relatively quickly. You don't want to leave it sitting there for like a few weeks or a month because what happens is that product will cake onto the brush and that itself isn't harming the brush. What does harm it is when you go to wash it off later, you now have a very thin, delicate strand of hair that has this heavy caked on product and it's too heavy for the fiber. And when you go to wash that off, you are then causing breakage and your hair might actually break off from there. So that's the main reason why you want to, um, why certain brushes should not be used with creams and liquids. It's more so about how quickly you remove that product from that and how gently you do that versus whether or not it's going to ruin the hair. So I hope that makes sense. So if, if you are using something like fox hair with, um, you know, a cream or a liquid, if you wash that off immediately after application, you're not really going to hurt your brush. Um, but the general rule of thumb is more so based off of what normal, you know, normal cleaning activities are for people. So of course the results will vary. So yeah, I think this was a lot of fun. So we'll definitely have to do a follow-up for this. Thank you all so, so much for coming. And I will, I will definitely go ahead and go through 
find all of my different hair types and we'll do that for the next video. We can look at all of the different fibers and which ones are favorites and so forth. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get through some of these brushes soon because I have to say this one is like one of the softest brushes I have. So uh, yeah, I picked up some, some new to me brushes recently. So like some more pine squirrel and things like that. And so we'll have to go through all of that. Favorite brushes by brand or series. Um, all right, I will add that in as well. And um, yeah, so thank you all so much. Again, any more questions, just leave them, either DM me or leave them on this video and I will be sure to write them down and we can address them next time. So thank you all so much and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you guys later. Bye.